a display of the Natural History Museum of Jamaica. We have in that collection, I'm Gillian Perrault, as Deputy Director of the Institute of Jamaica. Mr. Russell, Patrice Russell, Education Outreach Officer, Natural History Museum of Jamaica. And the Natural History Museum of Jamaica is the oldest division of the Institute of Jamaica. And many of you might not know, but what is in the Hope Zoo actually started at the Institute of Jamaica. And uh, presently we have about 300,000 specimens in both the flora and fauna collection. And we host the American point on biodiversity in Jamaica. Yes. So Ms. Russell will actually just explain. Um, what she has here on display. Okay, well, today we are just giving a taste of what we have in our zoological collection and we are focusing on some of our endemic animals. We have here the Jamaican iguana, which is our largest land reptile and it is endemic to Jamaica and it's also endangered. This is the Jamaican yellow snake, which it, this is the Jamaican yellow snake. It's a it's a non-poisonous reptile, and it can get up to ten feet in length. And uh, it's found in regions of the Copic country and the Blue and John Mountains. We have here some Jamaican butterflies, one of which is extinct. This one is the giant swallowtail butterfly and it's the second largest butterfly in the world and it's special for a number of reasons. Its size, it can get up to six inches in wingspan as well as its beauty. So it's very rare and it's very special. Uh, it's also endangered for two main reasons. One, because of its locations, it's found in very remote forested regions, such as in regions of the um, Blue and John Kerr Mountains, and um, also because it's endangered due to habitat loss, deforestation, etc. This is the Jamaican pony. It's, a lot of people mistake it for the mongoose, but as you can see, it doesn't have a tail. The mongoose has a long tail. And it's a nocturnal animal, so you you will hardly see it because it's nocturnal and also because it's endangered. And it feeds mainly on fruits and small insects. So it's mostly herbivorous. And the last animal is the hawksbill turtle. It's one of four turtles found in our Jamaican waters. And it's it's also endangered because of um, coastal development. It, it normally lays eggs on our beaches, but because of coastal development, it's, it's not an issue where the eggs get damaged by humans as well as other animals feed on it. Yes, and we have many more specimens in our zoological collection back at the Institute of Jamaica, so you can come and see sometime. How has International Museum Day been with um, the traffic here at Jamaica, the Jamaican Military Museum? I think it was a success. We had maybe 500 students or more. So it, it, it has been very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gillian, can you share with us what high school you went to? I am an Andrews girl <laughs> and also a past student of St. Andrew Prep. Oh, wonderful. What so house were you in? Certainly, it prepares us for all the steps, significant steps we do take in life. And, and I'm proud to be an Andrews girl. What house were you in? I was in Garrett Shore. Purple house. Purple house. Okay, okay. Right, little purple rooster <laughs> sitting on the fence. <laughs> Good. Okay, thank you so very much. Thank you. Rosalie Grant, um, Education Officer, Museums of History and Ethnography, and I'm simply going to um, talk to you about some of the intriguing pieces that we have on display. Now, one of the pieces that really people find fascinating is this piece, and it's the turtle shell wow. um, poem, and it's actually, and a case as well, was found in Port Royal underwater and it was made from the turtle shell and there was a thriving turtle shell industry 
in Port Royal in the 1600s to 1700s. A similar piece would be the turtle shell jewelry box. This too was found underwater and of course it was used really. Close-up shot would show that it would you would um, have your jewelry in there so that was where it was stored and of course it too was made from the shell of the turtle and the turtle the orc bill and the green turtle then now another fascinating piece would be this sundial and this would have preceded the clock or modern day timepiece and what happened was that when sailors and or any this was introduced by the English and it's about 500 years old so it's actually very old what would happen was that whenever they wanted to really tell the time they would stand in the sun and they'd place this in the sun and then the needle would show what time of day it actually was this goes back to 1818 what is this? and this is a sampler that was in on plantation would have been made by um, English women who were then living on plantation and of course we got the concept of the embroidery from this. Wow. So wow is this a John Kuno costume on display? This is a John Kuno costume and of course Christmas time would be a time that they would be celebrating aspects of um, festivals and of course the slaves themselves had a the, um, few free time so they really went about really having a great time. The jungle was a feature and of course it had its, its African heritage, was influenced by African um, because they had masquerades then and so they would masquerade, they would parade um, around Christmas time. So this here belonged to a particular character, it was the Pichy Pachi. Okay. So these are just some of the things that we have on display and these are some of the things that are of intrigue. I, I see some African combs. Can you tell me a little bit more about these? The Afro pigstyle comb. Actually the Afro pigstyle comb is African in origin. It's it's African in origin and so really it was it's made from beautifully carved from wood. Africans work wood and wood work and metal work and, and carving. And so this is an example of one of those pieces. But of course the Afro pigstyle comb is African in origin. Okay, wow, you have some really lovely pieces on display. Um, is this a copy grinder? Yes, this is a copy grinder. And after, this, this represents the post-emancipation era. After emancipation, Jamaicans would have used some of these. And the most wealthy persons who enjoyed coffee would use this coffee grinder. The coffee beans were placed in that to have that kind of twirling motion. And then out of these drawers, you do really get the coffee in the Itself. So Jamaica is celebrating her um, 50th right. day of independence and, and year of independence. Right. And so I'm seeing, is this an original? Um, that, that's an original piece, piece that in, the, in the, 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 the phase of nationalism, because then 1962 nationalism would have been right. I mean, people were in high gear celebrating Jamaica. These pieces were original pieces that were distributed to Jamaican households. And this is an aluminum cup that every Jamaican really during that time was, was given. Okay, well thank you so very much for taking the time out to share with us today. Um, I'm sure you're, this is just a teaser of what it is that you have.